the Abyssinian mm. project, Satamasagana, mm. one of the greatest body of work in our history of music. That was you. True and true. Well, yeah, well, so, 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 um, I have heard it a lot in my life. <laughs> yes. But, um, it was all, uh, I guess, be at the right place at the right time right. as a part of it. But I am, um, again, Jeffrey Chung. Mm. I, we rub shoulder anywhere, anything. Anywhere in the world, Jeff, I'm, if they don't hire me, they have to hire me. Or he hire me, even if they can't pay me, and they pay me. Mm. Okay. And if, as I say, I mean, it's not about the money, it's always about the work. Because we just set it and walk away. <laughs> I mean? yeah. So anyway, that, I'd work on the Abyssinians. I know the songs that I must have done before I met oh, okay. guys. Mm -hmm. and they had done it before. Their own production at Studio One. Mm -hmm. But um, I was working for, Jeffrey Chung was working for a company and they hired me to. Jeffrey Chung and, um, and Bob Andy and a few other people worked for that company and they hired me. And then they asked me to produce Carl Dawkins. And then I did an album. I don't remember it ever come out. And um, I did Max Romeo. Mm -hmm. um, if you ask Max Romeo, say they say it different. Because like, artists are like that. So Max Romeo is not giving you the credit that you are No, most to artists don't say so. I mean, I do have Jack Yorah and tell people I didn't produce it. May I produce Jack Yorah's album, and him there at Trinidad, and, and, him, and me there and I do it. And then he come out, he's, he come to him, he's in producing. And me not, me not call any of them names now. Because none of them, them bad things don't worry me. Yeah. And, and, but, look at me, a studio me now, my brother in a studio. Then my brother I run. <laughs> Listen, well for them. Yeah. But a uh, lot of them is, very few still, you know, but it's too much. Too much. Yeah. Um, yeah, my produce Max show me, and I want, the thing about some of them artists here, uh, well, we're, we're talking about the Abyssinian, but it's, it's all in the same time. So right, one office right, work. right. Then, the, 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 somebody in the company says, listen, I don't want you, Tom. They run down Tom, and then drop everything to him to the money. Mm -hmm. I mean, and ask something, it's a money in a car, and they run, come, and say, Clyde, you're producing. He might have two songs, but me have to find 10, or 20, or 50, 12. I mean, I'm going to come together and, and meet them. And you find the song, then. I'm going to record them. They must turn up when I want them, and them, and them come sing, sing the rough vocal. I'm going say, OK, bye, I'll call you when I need you. And, and you I'm fix it up. And then they come and they put them voice. Click, click for clarity. And then they go on, burn. And then it came out, and then we don't see them again until when either them realize that we make some money for this, and I show him they didn't value. So they tell and somebody, say, back again. Check, check him, or they come to him and say, do something, do something for me. You understand? They, they do that to everybody, all producers who are, mm. is of note all the time. And you do something again, you know I mean, or they come with some little money, or they come and cry, they don't have their money, and they drive a Benz and you take a bus, you know, and they beg you. <laughs> and if you know, do it, they're not going to be nowhere, Benz will flag, flag out. Serious. Anyway, Max over thing, I miss, <laughs> with them, Max over them start sell it. Yes. I'm house, so I'm distributing and selling. Mm. So Mr. Max showed me I sell the album and he managed him daughter managed it and like, de -de 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 -de. and it mark and it mark and it produced by Max Romeo. Yes. And then we read one or two interviews in England and in France that he produced that album and he was Clive on uh, help him. He didn't say me like me, co produce it, you know. But he yeah, said help, the help yeah. like me, just help him. That means uh, he's like coordinate me. I call him and call the studio and just make sure. But you produced it. He was not he was, he just turn up and you yeah, me say. So we're going to record a song and you turn up and say, Mary and a little love. I say, that's it? Uh, okay, boom. Then by him gone. And then my record, dim, 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 dim. I'm come across, go, sing it for God. I'm saying, Mary had a, and him gone. And then you see, he come out, my produced by Clive on, sang, sang by you, written by you, or co-written. Ten years later, I see Mark, him start to say, and me, him produce it. Clive won't help him. And Clive won't name, shouldn't they put thing, you know? Or Clive won't name, but they put me thing. I said, most of them stay. Let me tell you something. Things are matter talk about my producer for every time. Let me tell you something about me. I'm yeah. 70 years old this year. Mm -hmm. In May, I'm 70. What part thing people don't know? I said, when they were thinking at me yesterday, when Big A was tell the minister and something. What am to Clive on? Because I'm going to name one of the list of producers to a reggae month and they don't call me name. And, and Big A said, oh, yeah, man. Let me tell you. My repertoire as a producer is larger than people who own studio. I don't make music for myself now. I'm a producer for Aya. There are very few of us. And I, yeah, most producers make music themselves for sell it themselves and look money in the pocket. Me produced by people. You are a manager, you're the artist, you come to me and say, Paul oh, Clive, I love doing song. Could you produce for me? How much money you charge me? 
You know what I mean? I do have much, you know. And then I depend on if it do good or not. And if you're honest okay. enough to come back. I am one of the few. It's not five hours ever. Ever, you know. And I'm one of the few. I produce more music than a lot of people who they're giving awards or the who own studios. I produce more music than them. In fact, I, I, I produce, I, I work every day in the studio. I, I, at 17, and I produce from, let me say now, I mean, I show off now. I produce from... Mm, the Scatterlights to Bob, Popcorn. Scatterlights to Popcorn. And I produce quite a few of younger than Popcorn, but they just don't get famous yet. And people paying a lot to spend on them. Mm -hmm. Even today. I mean, tell me, I'm 70 today. There's no one in the business who ever done that. No one ever. Okay? So we can talk the way I'm talking up to about any guys who don't like it and come talk to me. When me talk about, you know what I'm saying? So we did the Max Home, yeah? I did that at Leaper. That's why Leaper asked him to do the album right the, after. The Ark. I did Black the Ark. album there and then Scratch asked him to do the album after, which became a big successful um, uh, album. The one with Three Blind Mice and oh, all of these kids. Yes, it came yes, right yes. after. If you listen to the song, it's very similar. Okay. I mean, yeah, man. Yeah, I have one of my friends, Alain Sudo, writes one of the songs and him, him actually sued Maxi. Because Maxi put his name on it. And he's and him's a, him's a football coach, a teacher, a dental. He not done nothing in music. He just write some lyrics and give me. And I just turn to my father friend, who was a raster man. Mm. He just put some melody and make Maxi sing it and put my name as co writer and Maxi too. And Maxi claimed it all right of his, as his. You know what I mean? So anyway, I did Max Romeo, the, um, not Dennis Brown, the Dennis Brown separately. Oh, okay. Max Romeo, Carl Dawkins, and, and then they asked me to do that. The Abyssinians. The Abyssinians. But I had worked with the Abyssinians on one of their songs named Imas Gan. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah, who like he's at Top Federal for some producer. I heard it was Moody's, but I don't remember. They just mm -hmm. called me to come play. me a musician. Call me a steady session musician from early 70s. You know, steady every day. And so work I'm in a feel like. You know what I mean? So, um, um, when they asked me to do the Abyssinians album, I was glad I liked them. You know, me never know nothing no, about them, them not much more than the, the Sat Satamasgan and Declaration of Rights, and then the Masgan. We think it was wicked. So, um, and they told me that um, they had a meeting, a production meeting, and they had Jeff Richard and all these people there, and they were talking about producers to produce them, and the group decided they wanted to the lick a youth. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. And that album, the story about that album from that day until maybe even now is a, a big book, so too. A big that book. It's maybe one of the most pirated records in reggae history. You know that? Yes. Yeah, man. And it's another story, too. Yeah, big and thing. And that situation with Satamasa Ghana mm -hmm. led to you migrating. Yeah. It was a part of it. Violence kind of got involved. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Jacob Miller. Jacob's come look, Jacob look, I mean, he asked me and I go check him and say, Clive, someone said, what do you do? I'm oh, so Jacob name. was the one who related the story to you. The, yeah, the, man, the, tell me, man. Yeah, man. Sorry if I'm not expressing Yeah, man, that's good. Are. That's all right. I mean, that's real like yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I tell so you. So Jacob <laughs> linked you and said, he might hear some things in the street. Yeah, man, he hear something serious and he was connected. Yes, yeah. Okay, I understand. Come in, get your street with you and I hope you would love him get to all about. I said, Clyde, man, I said, man, I look for you, kill you. I said, you pirate. I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, so I take for myself. Basically, but I had another reason why I can't talk about. Understood. I can't talk about serious other things was happening. And I hot made a hot and And then I had to take it back, but it was oh. even dangerous even to, to have get myself into that. It was, it's a big thing. But um, through the same company and the association and the music and right. music people and politics, and I'm not, I've never been involved in politics in no way. Just because uh, defiance and certain me, a little boy, a rasta picnic, trust me, do a lot for me. You know, it changed my course. Instead of becoming this nice, decent, young gentleman, I became, officer, like, a rebellious. I became like a, the rebel, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for you on the block. Yes. Choose that part. So anyway, the Abyssinians album, it, 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 yeah. I, you know, one of my, so a few of my, it, it, one of my poor, proudest memory, and, and, and even though I know I don't have anything to show for it. Yes. There was a magazine named Newsweek magazine. It was one of the biggest US paper oh, okay. magazine. It came out, I don't know, maybe it's once a week or whatever, but it was big. Um, and twice they voted Abyssinian's album as one of the best, after the 10 best all time reggae albums. And in, in that 10 list, Bob Marley had maybe about three 
and, and, and there was a Dennis Brown album too. I think the name Wolf and Leopard was on that album, mm -hmm. and Milk and Honey on that album too. And it was also in the, in twice, like after a few years apart now, best all time reggae album. So I, went, I felt proud of the, that. And nice. that was in the 70s. 70s. Yeah, late, right up to late when Baba go on good. Yes. So, you know what I mean? Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Eventually, as we said, based with the Abyssinian thing, you went to New York to live. Yeah. Mm. Which year was that? 70 what? Don't remember? I, say, I, 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 would, uh, I think about 76, you know. 76. That's how much work me do between Before, before 76. 76, right. In fact, when I decided to go to New York and when Jacob told me that, and um, <laughs> me, I didn't know nobody in New York. I'd never been to New York. Um, I've been as a musician once oh, with In Cold Man, Scott, right. and just cut with, with the In Burning Spirit and Scott. I I'm, I I'm, me never make out for tour things. I, mean, I like that vibe. <laughs> I don't know me. I like yeah. to create. Create. Yeah. Mm. Um, so um, I just tell my wife, say, oh, well, cut. And I, I, I get two tickets uh, from a, a, a man who is an executive producer, mm -hmm. a Christian man. Down the road, who make music. We all the way make, Bunny Brooks, all the way make music for him. I'm mean, just telling him, listen, I have a problem, I have to leave. And you need to leave me and my wife to go to New York. And I'm just getting tickets for me right away. You know, like within 24 hours, you know, I'm going to leave. I remember, I always tell people, say, I'm going to New York to leave. I didn't know nobody in New York. I know nowhere in New York. But I know, say, you have Manhattan, right? And um, I, I decided, I just, with $74. $74. But I know, I had one thing. I had Clive Hunt. My name Clive Hunt. Up to that time, for the few little years, anywhere upon the planet, reggae day. I'm Clive, Clive on. Yeah, yeah. Me know, me know, me know immediate attention because I did so much work. It's you know, in so many people. Yeah, man. I'm, and so I went there and just put her in a hotel on 38th Street and I said, "I soon come." Walk up to Times Square, went downstairs in the train station and look and say, "Looking for the longest train." <laughs> yeah. The longest train was the number two that run from New Lads in the Brooklyn to 241 Street at the top of the Bronx. I'm mean, just got the longest route and come out. And when it come out from underground and up up and to the end of it, boom, stop. Come out and stand up. So I see, see a man look like a Jamaican, which is, <laughs> yeah, 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 I mean, could I tell one then? Yeah. You know, it's unlike now when it's a whoop up, dread up people, mm. you know, who is who. So I just did, I see a man walk with that thing, I look a swag, I say, oh, a yard man. Yard. <laughs> I mean, so I walk, when I come to me, I step to and say, I say, yo. <laughs> just like that, and I say, mm. and say, yes, man, I say, um, in the, the reggae record shop about the place, or studio, I said, so, yeah, man, one day I'm going to show me a place up, up the block. And I couldn't see exactly. Mm -hmm. Pointed that store in front of me, right across. And I said, thank you, boss. And I walk, when he walked away, I said, oh, by the way, one of the musicians live right over there, so. And I walk across the street and um, knock at the gate and I said, hello, hello, I'm not hearing nobody. I'm going in style, come here, you're thinking about America, you're going to be in the yard, what happened to you? And I said, hello, hello, hello. And it's just a duplex, two set of bells. Right. And so, as I touch the downstairs bell, me look inside and I see my bridging Allah, the chalice. You see Allah from the arm. Chalice, yes. see Allah cock up on a reed, because we, we have the habit of which we read, read, read. Allah cock up on a, in, a, in, a, in a sofa to read. And I say, it's a top the glass, nearly broke it. Allah, Allah. And I say, Azul. Okay, I'm calling me Azul. Azul yeah. <laughs> so my friends have called me, it's a D, music friend. Them. And I say, I say, Allah, boy, I'm glad you see me, I couldn't believe my luck. And, and I said, boy, I guess what? <laughs> see the my, 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 my wife and I had married at the time. Mm. See, see the hotel. I said, I said, said, oh, 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 you relax. I said, oh, you relax. I Clive, everybody want you. And mm. he, so I said, yeah. He said, come with me. And I go to the store and the record shop and him, him, it's a music up here. And I said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh. Yeah. And stuff. And everybody, I said, hello. And I said, yo, Clive want this. <laughs> that was it. That was it. Mr. Rook said that. He said, this is a student. I said, boss, boss, yes. I mean, I said, listen, Bridget, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, go for it, I'll come. I'm going to say, that was it. That was it. And, you know, and it was through the Abyssinian thing. Through the Abyssinian and thing. And the whole, that was another episode of my life. Started, yes. So, again. So, that, so, Joe Gibbs was in New York? Ho Joe Gibbs? Yes. No, did, man, did, you, did you link up with Joe Gibbs and Light Barnes? In, 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 in America. Light Barnes is New York. It's the place we're walking to. A film place we're walking to. Bullwark is. But I worked with Jogis before. But Jogis was the type of producer where I never really want to work with him. Because you hear stories, you know, and when I'm there, you know, 
retirement crisis. But right. when, it, when the Abyssinian Zabon was being made, the company went bankrupt. Mm. That, this is, let me say, Abyssinian is a story, you know. Right. The, the company went bankrupt while I was in, had started the album, and everybody ruined out of Jamaica. Remember in the 76, there was that everybody ruined out of Jamaica, right. you know. Uh, every, I leave. Went to Jamaica, yeah, who could leave? Leave. Drop everything and leave. So, I had the album to do, and there was no money to do it. I remember the Abyssinians get them advance. I didn't get no advance. I mean, I work, but me work for salary. Weekly salary, me never get us, everybody gone. So I don't know, me had the tapes. So I went to Jogi, me went to RJ and do a little work for RJ and give me studio time. When I okay. start the session now, my real session with Jogi is me not taking no money neither. Me work yes. and it's, it's studio time. time. So that's I mean up I work on hundreds. I must go bubble and work on more more um Jogi songs and, and than me. Uh, not even willing, you know. I may be willing, you know, but you know what I mean? A few mm -hmm. of us. But me got Joe Gibbs and said, I work for Joe Gibbs to get studio time to finish Abyssinian's album. In fact, I me laid the tracks out of the tracks and was laid at, 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 at Joe Gibbs' studio. But at the time, I pay studio time and, and you know what I mean? Oh, okay. And, and thing. But so me and Joe Gibbs did up a relationship. Okay. And then when we run to New York, we Light left. Light Barnes. It broke up with Lighty. Yeah. Yeah. Bulwakis. Bulwakis, yeah. And that was our next story, next it's episode. It's a whole story. Episode, episode yes. by itself. Yeah. Eventually, whilst in New York, you develop an addiction for cocaine. I was in, yes. I, yeah, I developed. I was in, I discovered it and it, it um. You discovered it. Well, I was, <laughs> I was telling you. people people laughing, that's what you said. Yeah, no, I me, 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 me hear about them thing there. And, and me, 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 my daddy a rasta, but me can't mm, smoke weed. Right. Me, 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 get high with music. So I was a boss about that. Me just get into a song and me got me high. You know what I mean? Because I start thinking about things when I'm not here, what could happen. That's how come me, this creative skills I have applied to what we do now, I've nice. been doing. Anyway, I used to say, Otta say, anybody who me know, they can quote me, and I work with them. So I, in New York, I was doing some very special work. Yes. With, um... <sighs> Rolling Stones. Well, yeah, but, uh, well, you know, so much things, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I was working with, with, with Bobby Keys, it's a saxophonist of Rolling Stones. Yes. And it was suggested by, uh, Keith Richards, which is a good friend, and Keith Richards was two pieces attached, you know, the whole, you know, world little link up. And um, when I work, my partner, I don't want to call him name, <laughs> <laughs> he was, you know, like a your position, I told him to co produce yes. something, executive producer, and I thought about just job as a producer. So, any work going to go, he's supposed to have half of the money. So, Frank Snatcher, and I was working in the studio, and I wanted some of the musicians there, man, to work with me. Yeah. So, I asked him to work on the album, and you know, and a few songs, and when it worked with the amount of money, I worked with the budget, and I'm telling him, we agree. So, we booked the studio. Hell of a studio, you know, this member's Frank such a work there. <laughs> Barbara Strice and Steel and Dan, everybody worked there. Billy Joel, this is where they live. But I had been linked with them, and me and them close. So, we work at this space, and we booked the studio, and I work, and when the man, just before the work done, my friend, my partner, ex co-executive producer, disappeared. Uh -huh. I never left the money with me and I had to pay the bill. So I called my girlfriend then and, and she just said, the rest of the money come. It's a lot of money, you know. To Western and don't stay, boom, get it, pay oh, everybody. Okay. And then me up, she's mad and I talk and a man said to me, say, come and carry where I'm there. I carry me where I was. And he was a famous musician when I, pfft, one time, big famous artist, which we talk about earlier, well, not <laughs> Big, 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 okay, big, 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 biggest, yeah, big. biggest. One of them were there and at his house. And we go there and we see a few people, famous people, famous people. And we, and we go there and say, wait, wait, wait. plus my partner, we say, blah, 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 blah. and Bridget won't know, say, him not hide. You have him to him, miss. You must say, Clive, at this, at this, where do? Because I say, I'll come over man. So I say, what are that? And I say, it's the drug thing. Somebody said, nothing can make me behave like oh no man. Nothing can make me behave. <laughs> but not behave like this and that. You know the Jamaican things that we yeah. said, said. And a man said, and him said, try it. So make me, me say, let me try that. And most of them said, think of the nasty. Blah, 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 blah. Curse. And then I was very upset because I'm under multiple reasons, you know, obviously. You know what I mean? When my brother me do a while ago. My girlfriend didn't feel no way of sending me the money, but me was just disappointed and it's a bad. And me and reggae and Jamaican musician is a man do that. Mm. And then drugs involved. So me, I was telling some people that if I had in retrospect, if I if me did not check, me I know there's something wrong. Because at night I went to a friend of ours' house, apartment, laugh, you know, 
and my virgin wife step on clean on all the ceiling, which is way up. Take leather and I clean one o'clock in the morning. I mean, I tell her what the story, and she said to me, tell two of them, and she said, Clive, you never try it the right way. And she just said, let me show you. And she showed me to try what they were doing. And it took me 11 years from that moment. For 11 years, I was hooked like a fish, instantly. I mean, serious, you know. I survived, me I always tell people, say, oh God, still, but me couldn't, me just couldn't dead. Me, the only thing I supposed to do was to just commit suicide. Cause me, them shoot her for me. I do everything not to hurt myself, like deliberately put something, but I do everything which is, is, is to, to, to not survive when I survive. I'm asleep in a bus stop, I sleep on the cellar, I sleep on people's veranda, I sleep on my friend them doggos. I do every, the worst thing we know, cocaine did though. I never eat out of garbage. Cause I mean, it's like a mark of, I mean, I eat, eat too much thing. You know what I mean? So I mean, just stay hungry. And plus coke, when you taste it, you don't have food. You know what I mean? Boom. Just like, I don't want to sleep, you know, the food. So I did go it all until I see my family I suffer. My mother don't want me nowhere near my community, my barn, my family. People say, mm -hmm. smile with me, but me know. And then I just start helping them, teaching them on music. <laughs> you remember playing bass in my bed? Yeah. Well, you yeah. came back to Jamaica? Or you were still over? We started, oh, oh yeah, I started yeah. over there until me get in trouble over there and got sent home. You were deported? Yeah. For drug-related yeah. charges? It wasn't about drugs, no. I mean, just did, um, I was on drugs, but I not to do drugs. Oh, okay. You don't know, not to do drugs. Okay. Me, 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 me children and mother, me just, I probably slap her or something. I was a addict, I was mm. stupid. And the police come and they, me and the police catch up. The police come to my house and see me and tell me, say, <laughs> and so walk with me, I'm walk. About 200 yards, and I just say, I'm friendly, and I talk to me nice, like me and my friends. And I say, oh, go on. And then he and say, um, You see, from now, you're not to go nowhere closer to that house than to this, 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 this radius of like this. <laughs> and I say, What? And I say, I'm Just run, run off, I run towards the house. <laughs> and just run to the house. I run to the and I chase all them friends them and I call them kind of I mean, just run, I mean, just take up a stone, I think that's what I did. I just throw a stone through the car wind, wind, windshield, I'm a black, I'm a billion black, I just throw that windshield, nobody was in the car, so, you know. and I just run right through the house and go, and until them will have a problem, we got to get lock up, okay. and then send me home, so I'm just like that. Anyway, Moses and Jogs, Moses was an idiot, a madman, I don't know. Anyway, good thing they never showed me around. I'm looking so happy. I'm glad they never yeah, showed me. Tell them, man. <laughs> a few people showed me. Just be clear. But anyway, and then we come home and the same thing. Mm, it I just was glad. continued. It just continued until it went so bad. And then I just, a man, I was with a man who, he was one of the JPS um, top, top, top um, technician. He, you know what I mean? He, he's a man who will buy all the, all the need. You know what I mean? Right. All, the, all the stuff there. The fittings and stuff. Yeah, and he's from that, that area and he, he play bass. I wanted to play bass. Uh -huh. And he begged me to teach him and he would pay me. And then him and him family was so impressed of through my, 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 when I checked my credibility, my credits of what who I was. Credentials. Yeah, yeah, credentials, yeah. And then one, one guy come there and say one day, say, you know, there's a rehab in Jamaica and I said, I mean rehab. He said, drug rehab, drug rehab. I said, no, man. He said, show me on the gleaner, the bottom of the gleaner. And, and I said, man, could you go to my mother, come with me and take it to my mother and show her. If I start, she's not going to listen to me. And he come, come there and, and sit down. And she's a decent chap. And my mother listened to him. I said, yeah, there's. And she was so happy. She asked one of the young men who, who live with her to take me to the rehab. And he took me up to the university. And I said, oh, 21 days and thing. I'm just saying. Whatever was just kind of me on. By that time, we gone 11 years already. <laughs> so we said, 21 years. I mean, I mean, I mean, I feel like Jamaican drug addicts never, they don't really, they're not really know about drug addicts. Mm. Anyway, we live so, you know what I mean? Been treated all, trust me, man. So anyway, the, and the nurse said, I mean, I said, no, 21 years kind of me on. And the nurse said, I'm talking the truth. And then she recommend a place named Patrick's House. Patrick's House. Um, mm. And then um, we went there, and they told me to come back one week later. And I said, one week? But I said, me, me we dead. He said, one week. And he said, come 8 o'clock Wednesday morning. And the next Wednesday, I went there at 8.15. And he said, come 8 o'clock next week Wednesday. And I beg and beg. And he said, no. When every time the person, my mother sent me the money, as I come to get me, take with all the money from him, you know. Bus fee and everything, I'll find me back at this <laughs> still. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> listen, and the second, the, the second, third time, I go there, I just go there from before and sit down and wait. 
And they come and then and them, them interview me and the, the staff figured I was I needed help. But them says that their decision is the, the drug addict them at the coke head like, like myself to decide whether they want me to stay among them. Oh yeah? It's a tough thing, it's a tough thing. And then, then they will interview me. And I say, what? <laughs> and them say, yeah, you can't come. They have to say, I'm going there and talk to them. Them say, yeah, you have a thief yet? Fig device. And I say, listen. Me never kill nobody, but ta anything else, you know what I say, me tell them. No, never ask me, me tell them. I just never kill nobody. And, and them say, we have to wait outside, far away. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, they come, because the space, because I'm not leaving them. Yeah. Three pack of cigarettes and a scandal bag with two underwear and piece of slippers. You know what I mean? And, and, and I'm out there waiting and smoke a few cigarettes and them call me. Oh, come here, Mr. Town. And them say, well, we don't think you're ready for this, you know, and thing. Because they, 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 they had a people say you're too cocky and you're too this and too that. I tell nobody no know nothing about music and me, you know. Mm. And I say, let me tell you something. Nobody can take me out of here. <laughs> when I have to take out my body. Your body to observe. Oh, no, me just, no, but no, me just get, but me not another choice. Yeah. Me just get bad, but I didn't know it, it helped me. Mm. But it not helped me like as a bad man, you know. It's just me utterances. Oh, me okay. say, when I have to call the police, and I'm say, could you wait back up there a little? And we go there another 10 minutes and they come back and say, okay, you can go home and come back next year. And I say, me nah, come out, you know. Let <laughs> us get bad. And them say, but sir, you don't have anything. Me say, me have a scandal bag with two underwear and me have slippers. And me have cigarettes and about 200 and I'm fucking. Me don't need worries on them. So, so you will see like that? Me say, yes, this emo currency me need. Come on. And they took me and I was so thankful. I spent that was, six months. That was 1991. Yeah. February 1991, and I left the September 1991. But you know what happened during that time? Because, you know, Truman Met Music, you, rec you record, you know, so the recording keep going around. And I, one of the songs I had recorded when I in my state was me um, putting up resistance. Yeah. So you were in rehab and you said that, you know, the music now. Forget about song, music. Right. Forget about music, totally. I am, um, I'm just going to tell him my name and. I discovered, by the way, that my name is Clive Hunt, you know, when I joined, when, before I went to Nellar, just before I went. Because the, the army couldn't find no Clive Hunt, you know, at, at, they sent somebody at the RGD at that time. And they couldn't find him. I search, 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 couldn't find him. They were preparing me for mm -hmm. I didn't even know. And they asked, you know, so they couldn't find no Clive Hunt, but they found a Maurice Hunt. At that, you know, same mother, same day, same everything. And then I found him, so there's some... When I was 17, my father said, I'm name Clive Hunt. So you're actually Maurice Hunt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so the army, I joined the army named Clive Hunt. That's one thing when, when I started to be bad, be bad, I just said, I never joined the army yet. Because Maurice never joined the army. Maurice never joined the army. Yeah, yes, I was 17 year old Clive Hunt. So, <laughs> I'm named Clive Hunt and I'm in the army and the age of the 17 army. Uh, so, anyway, I didn't think they could have power me. You know, I mean, one day they might come to me, but I'll have a talk. Yeah, trust me, I go as far as it's sit there. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, they easy to say, yeah, yeah, I mean, if they want trouble, I mean, I'm 70 old. Hey, so they, make, they make me famous. <laughs> so so you said that while in yeah, rehabilitation. Yeah, yeah uh, I didn't tell, I just give me a name and just sit there. Because you're, and rehab, you're supposed to give up anything. Because they say, when you're, you're, you're cocaine, you give up. You're a drug, drug man, you just give up everything. Yeah? You don't care about nothing, nobody. Mm -hmm. So if you see your, your daughter, your mother, anybody, you just look the other way. For the first six weeks, you're not supposed to look up, make eye contact with you, anybody you know or nothing. You see them, you go. If you get a visit, you go. Mm -hmm. And they take the visit and, and talk okay. to them. Yeah, you, if you want to say something, you tell the staff, and the staff tell Related them. Related to yeah. you. Mm -hmm. And vice versa. So anyway, I was there for months doing everything they asked me. I decided to just trust them. Because I do that a few times in life. I just have to trust who I'm with. And they teach you about trusting, you know what I mean, mm. people. So, yes, and um, it, I was doing all right, doing everything they asked. And I was doing good. And I was surprised they never get a pill. You never get a, a oh, spoon of okay. medicine. So it was just natural. Yeah, you just live in normal. You just wake up now at a certain time. You spread your bed, you clean up your, your area, you shower, shower, brush your teeth, come here. When you're a drug addict, quote man, you know, in drug D, uh, what you say? I don't even know what you say. Drug uh, addict. When you're a drug addict, yeah, because, you know, they me, 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 me get into this street thing. When you're a drug addict, you don't do those things, you know. So you just start to live like a normal, normal person. person that's again. the way. And then the thing about it, they tell you whenever you have any 
feelings, which is will feel like you make you want to leave or walk out or get hungry, or so they tell you, tell you I don't need to challenge it. Challenge mm. it. So you, you call a meeting. You just say, you can call a meeting. Anytime. You call a meeting against the director, the man who is in charge. You can just say, I'd like to have a meeting. I'd like to have a meeting. And you hear everybody say, meeting, meeting. And you go in a big room and everybody sit in a circle and say, the director, he look at me like he hit me. And you know what I mean? And then they mm. like express themselves. And then they list to you calmly. And then they, then everybody starts saying, then why do you feel that way? And so and this person until, <laughs> and this until, and then they, 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 they where they 15 minutes after you, you've got like, oh, okay. And everybody, you're normal again. Mm. So that's all, that's the only medicine, basically. You know, you're, natural you're, you're, you're just rehab. let out your, yes. You're just a natural thing. I mean, that you must, and you do. Then after a while, the longer you do, you start getting responsibility, you're in charge for, of the whole facility for mm. a week or a month. Mm. And you're, even the money, you go, you, and the money include your cook, you just you set the budget for the staff in the whole facility, you know. So they give you this responsibility. I mean, cook it up for the city. You know? It was, be, it was they give inclusive. You this responsibility. Eh? The rehabilitation was one of inclusion. Yes, everybody. Yes, mm. and and you you your and you you cook or you are, you, you you make sure you set the budget and then the the menu and everything and you live in normal. So they judge you by that, I guess. And you judge you, you yourself. You confident in yourself. It's, it's a, you know, it's a really build back itself. Anyway, I just go through it and follow everything they say. They, and they told us ahead of time that as a, from a certain date, it would be a no smoking facility. Mm -hmm. And after that time, even staff smoke. And they had staff from overseas, you know. They had oh, okay. American, British, so on. And uh, I never tell nobody I was um, a music person until one day, I think, uh, this song, Put Me On Princess Song, was big, like biggest reggae song anywhere. And then it's a play play. And, Somehow my name get mentioned on the TV, you know? And um, through my, my name, Ray Ray, but I still call myself Clive Hunt. Clive Hunt, yeah, yeah, but you're Maurice. Clive, Clive Hunt. <laughs> so when I start to say, someone on the TV say, yeah, man, I say, oh, I say, Clive Hunt, and then I say, Clive Hunt, where am I? And I say, and somebody, and the person say, you know, say, man, he might take care of himself, man. And then I say, like the person say, the, the president or the, the interviewer oh, okay, say, yes. oh, a long time, we don't have heard about that. What is he doing? He say, no, man, he's coming on. He's somewhere taking care of himself, man. He'll be okay again. I say, oh, wonderful. And I say, who they say, who make this music? And so the story come out. And then, <laughs> it kind of went on one TV, you know. So everybody look at it. watch it. Then the directors walk up to the TV and turn to and say, you with a chat about? And I say, yes, boss. And I say, oh. Okay, I go up and turn up by the TV. So, you know, the so life start changing. Mm -hmm. It was not supposed to. I mean, for me, like, it's still the same rough, you know, but the yes. other people, I mean, you know, start to... Yeah, Star is a mouth. Stress, mm. stress, stress, stress. <laughs> <laughs> and I was asked to leave forcibly, like, a few days before my time. Oh, yeah? So you're not supposed to have no special friend with ship with no one. And one guy just say, a, a girl wash a shirt of mine. I didn't know that too. And I and, and said, no. And, and, and I said, she went on I said, you wash my shirt? And she said, yes. I said, who tell you that? And then the rule is if she wash my shirt, she wash everybody's shirt. Mm. You can't have a special thing. And they tell us to leave. One night about 7 30, you know. Yeah. And tell me to go. And I said, go, go where? You have to leave now, sir. I said, I live in Linston. I don't have no money. And one of the staff members, a lady, started crying. And she just, she just, she just gave me $50, because she didn't have no more money. Mm. And she said, she, all she had was a bus fee and $50. And she, she gave me, but $50 couldn't carry me from New Kingston to Linstead. And I said, what? And I said, my mother in New York, and I have to, nobody, you know, you know what I mean? I'm confused, and I tell me I try hard to be straight, you know. And them say, them sorry, and that's the rule. So I just walked from New King, $50, and walked to half a tree. And me say, Berries. Berries and the man who played domino. Berries and man. And I mean, because something behind Berries, because I know him will give me a hard time now. <laughs> I know say, my time not up. They don't really know where they know. Say, them, I think they know by that time. Mm -hmm. I, and the one who wasn't sure about him. So I stopped there and Berries played domino. And the man who played domino, I, I look for me. And I see my, him, I say, oh. And I'm looking and say, Clive, Jesus Christ, Clive, what are you doing here? Are you going to be running to the place? I said, nice, I'm a nicer man. I <laughs> <laughs> said, no, them tell me to go home. I said, what you do? Nothing. They just tell me to go home. 
So what? Uh, me say, me come see what, say, I, I would have played him, not even him know where it was. Me say, up on New Kings, I'm a walk, come and I'm say, you know, um, me for leave. I mean, and I'm say, so what? Uh, me say, me come see, come see you, come and look at money. But you know, nobody not get a jug at it, no money. It's, you know what I mean? So shall I bear him know me, me and him, <laughs> well, I'm a brother. Right. So, me say, Berg, here what you do. You just pay a taxi here, so, and tell me, drop me, I'm a mother. Because Berg, so my mother live and everything, mm. come, come down there. A country there. And, and, <laughs> and anyway, he said, No, no, no. I'm going to say, Coach, man, come on, man. You know what I mean? And anyway, he just said, Where? I'm going to say, New, the same as me, I'm saying, New Kingston. He just give me a key for him, SUV, which I never drive one. And then they never see one. Because I'm in the fan, drugs, I never paid them to never mind. And he said, Go free. Can't put him know me, me, me was right. normal, rare, all over the world, man. Him being so he gave me one key, I drive, go up there. <laughs> when people have seen me drive, come a scandal bag there for that. <laughs> yeah. When I so drive up there and just jump out there and walk there, I think everybody will look for me to come to and say, you, just drive up back and go to Berries half a tree. And I say, come to Berries, I have to leave at night. I mean, I want up on the road at night and thing. And then I said to me, um, Claire, you can't go country. I say, Berries are country. You say, everybody want you for work. I say, mm -hmm. I want to go country. And then I said, Clyde, you can't go. I said, Barry's man, but them foolishness are bridging. And he said, Clyde, come up on me hard, come stay, man. <laughs> I said, Barry's man, he convinced me because he wouldn't, he wouldn't mm. do it. So I went home with him, and I can't tell I drive my own car home two weeks later. You went home with him, and you drive your own car home two weeks yeah, later. Yeah, man, we work enough money to buy a, a car and drive home. Two weeks later. Mad. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and two weeks later, I get rid of that car. I ski to it. And I didn't we wanted something better. And and in that one period now, um, Jimmy Cliff saw me. I mean, I work, Jimmy Cliff saw me and drive me down like he's a madman. And I said, I want to Jimmy, to him drunk. And I said, Jimmy, he must say, Clive, are you the put up resistant? And he said, Me and way to the airport, I'm, I'm going to Italy and I'm back in two weeks, exactly. Please, I want to see you. Could you, you know? And so we never have cell phone and thing. Tell me where to get him. It was near house anyway. Oh, okay. And we, we come and meet him. Come, we went and we went and came back and met him and he asked to do some work. I can see clearly now came out of that. That came after. after. That whole relationship. In fact, oh, okay. I mean, just done some work up to now, but it's a whole thing. You know, because I know you have been working out of his studio for a while. At least we lease it, man. At least, at least. He had his studio. <laughs> he had his studio for Clearly six years did. and nobody never worked there. Not even him. Yes? Yeah? I mean, he asked me to produce him. I tell him work there. He said, no, no, no. I said, Jimmy, I'll make this into. I mean, work there. And this, you see, your album come out, it's, well, I, I, did, I did a lot of work there. You did a lot of work there. Yeah. Yeah. But um, my story, you know, this part of what I'm talking about, there's stories where it's just not to spoke about it. Now. Right. We've got a relationship with producer and artist, and the artist and their personal greed and things that do a different thing, you know. Mm. No, I mean, I tell you, some of the artists are the most greedy human being on life, on the earth planet. On the earth. I saw them and live. They, they, they're taking everything from everybody else. And they're serious. Like, in serious. And so I have stories like that, you know. But I've, heard, know I but I've heard that the other way around, you know, sir, sir, so, sir. So, so the producer, them, I agree with you. Yeah, but remember, sir, me is not that I'm, I'm not a producer who produce for, like, if you're the singer, right. you're not a producer yeah, yeah, who makes money. That you know. I only pro, I'm one of the few producers, you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you. Producer, who, I, uh, you call me to produce you, mm -hmm. and you pay me, you own the tape. Right. I don't have nothing to go sell. You understand? Totally. So I am not, I, I don't you follow that category. That no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so coming to the say, for a man who wrote that, my, I have my repertoire is bigger than Jamie's. Mm -hmm. My repertoire of work. We soon call some name, man. We no, call some name already. I can, yeah, I can tell you. It's bigger than people who own studios who make hits and famous and getting you know, awards. My repertoire as just someone who sit down and want somebody to find me and say, could you do that? Please. And we work with them whether they have the money or not. Mm -hmm. You mean? Serious. I still do it. I know you do it. <laughs> Today, Today, I work with a man in overseas and he, he begged me from Friday I come here to work. When I come here, he not send no money. I'm going to tell him, say, Bridget, I never work for drug addicts. I, not drug addicts. I never work for drug dealers, pimps, or prostitutes, or people who live in high life. Because on the way to the studio, five great musicians will be there, plus engineers, and a big expensive studio. You tell, they, they tell you to book it and wait. And on the way here, they book up two pretty girls. And they say, where are you going? The girl said, Negril, I'm going to Negril. And now you want the courtesy to call us. 
Cancel. Lowly musicians. They say, boy, cancel and give me an excuse. You know, me have a two take. This happened to everybody. It happened to us today. And the musicians were proud of me. Me rant and rave like a madman in here, you know. And tell the man come back and I apologize. I mean, I say, you can't, you can't from Friday, you book me about, about the session and, and when me call you six o'clock, you're still in your bed. And I say, I leave a country, I leave home late, you're still in, you don't, you're just going to the shower. And I mean, I'm in the studio now and we're working on the TV two hours and you don't send the money yet. I mean, I say, Bridget, listen, and I don't charge him either. I don't charge him to come. I have him as a friend. But him, 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 so I say, don't call me back for music, you know. I'm going to tell the musician them something that, listen. You know, saying so back in the centuries and centuries and centuries ago, we are the jokers. We, we, just, we, we, just, we just make people who sad or miserable or make them happy, you know. But they're nobody going to rate you after that. Tomorrow, when them, when them sober and them things, they don't want to see we. We fly around there, so. Mm. We, eat the, we eat in the kitchen and all them cutting there. <laughs> Sorry. No, man, everything good, man. <laughs> no, no, seriously, I'm be practical and tell them. So I'm telling you, it's still a go on. So I'm telling you, they listen. Me respect musicians and certain people, creative people, more than the people who perform. Right. You know what I mean? So, it's just, I'm saying that with me, is a whole bag enough thing <laughs> to talk about. Thing. Really so, you have to just direct me yeah, over and me to talk. <laughs> 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 me tell you, me to talk things we've never been written about. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm talk about from ICE, from mm. the ICE, and not only here, internationally too. You know, one time, um, <laughs> let me tell you something, Mick Jagger sent send to call me one time, you know. I mean, him not relationship like all yes. Sly and all of these and Peter Trotter and you know, cause they are part of the the, the, the signing. Right. I was just associated with doing an album with one of the guys in the band, and I'm going to look up for the man in more time and we do something, and some of them come work for me. You know what I mean? But we can't. I mean, I use Rolling Stone and just come right, work for that's, me. Right, and right, then, right, right, and right, right, right. I was doing some work and. In the same studio, I tell you about big studio where, there. Where, where the thing happened with me and my experience, and then there's a big guy chauffeur. Came there, you know, have a chauffeur, have a chauffeur uniform, tie and thing. And, and he said, Oh, it's Clive Hunt. And so, I mean, we just worked this with him. I was in the office, a talk, little run job. And I said, Yeah, I mean, what happened? I just saw this thing, just tried to. Whereas when people be official, I just done Jamaican, you know. You know what I mean? And I said, Yeah, what? He said, Uh, uh, Link, would like to speak to you. And I said, Actually, I was working, but I came out the studio into the office so on the phone and just arranged something. So I said, Make cool. I said, Make Jagger. I said, All right. I said, all right, when there? And he tell me the studio up 54th Street. And I said, all right. And I said, when? He said, no. He went giant, you know. I said, I'm in the chairs and the lows. And I said, where is it? He said, no. I said, where am I do? He said, my work. I said, where did BC Ray 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 look like me do? I said, man, come out there, man. What the hell look here? I wrote everybody this. Look here. Look here. He said, five minutes later, I'm like, oh, oh, Clive, I'm sorry. Let me say, yeah. Hey. But go there, five, I'm done work. I go there. The whole night, the man have half a Heineken back. I'm not a simple clip. I'm saying, look for me. And he see me and the other man, I'm talk and I interact and where, where, where. And the man said to me, say, Oh, eventually, like before day I lied on him, say, I wanted to meet you, you know, you know, you, there's a lot you don't, you're gonna be, you know, I'm telling you, people, things will happen to me. Mm. People are gonna rob me, people are gonna nice me up and other thing. And I'm gonna tell you, but me never want you, me was stupid. You see what I'm saying? I'm gonna tell me all type of thing. But me, it's like, you know, you know, you know, you just dive in at the, right. the entertainment. We're inter, instead of we are entertained, we're entertaining ourselves too. Mm. You understand? And him called me to warn me. And me, it's one of the things that make me regretted. Uh, yeah, I should have listened you know, listen and even take the relationship because I was always around them. Right. Was a little, little thing. And then a few things. The more thing would probably manifest out of that. Of course. I mean, and as there's a few regrets I've had. I know you might have missed out. Never that have question. Said. Yeah, a few things. <laughs> like like I got an opportunity to work with Tina Turner. And it was just after that in episode two, I mean, they start taking this up, you know. I mean, behave like I feel like me a lion and thing. You know what I mean? And a man, she, I mean, she don't know me and I don't know, think her. But an agent who was working with her, all of us, get, he was, get one, he was instruments and getting Dennis Brown signed to AM Records. Mm -hmm. But, you know, these type of American guys, they're flashing them talk fast and pretty and talk, and I'm sorry. Um, and they, 
he wanted me, he was want to be, he wanted to be my agent, and he was getting me jobs with different people, you know, talking to other people. I got to Clive Hunt, a Jamaican producer, and you can do this. He's very talented. And Mr. Don't quite like right, so. And he was like, Clive, I'm, I'm, Tina Turner would like to do a reggae song, and and, and he, I'm gonna say, Virgin, I, I mean, I understand what I'm saying. I just say something really horrible, but it's on a curse word. I don't know. Like we was like, what? Well, well, look, come on. And, and he said, OK, OK. About a month, or a little over a month later, we were all sitting in Betty Wright's house. King Sporty, the guy who did Buffalo yeah. Soldier, and Betty Wright, and married to him, was at the house. Because they feel the house was like my house. And we got them in sleep, and they, 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 what, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're part of the family. I mean, in, in, the, in the Florida room, the back where they put but the smoke, and, the, and my fry some fish. Lots of celebrities always have passed through, you know? And they were there talking, and we had, we had smoke. Two, for chalice, and smoke. It was me can't do it. I'm just socializing. I'm damn you, that when I smoke, speak my language. And me here, me here, listen. To do, got to do. I mean, if I say, the way they know, we were talking. I mean, I say, oi, oi, oi. And everybody looking at me and say, what are the clues? And everybody looking at me and back talking. I mean, after I say, oi, blah, 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 blah. Oh, no, you don't know. Man, why hear something? And the guy, his name is Larry Maxwell. He just say, hey, Clive, it's the whole lady. <laughs> I had to say to him, say, well, I'm not producing the whole lady. <laughs> no. But me, what do you say? He said, come at me, make it up. He said, hey, Clive, it's the whole oh, lady. lady. You know what song, what love got to do with it? That was the song playing. So that is a song that she wanted I, you to work I, it, it was, uh, Yeah, she was doing that and she wanted to do a reggae thing. Um, but, me, you know, say, I, I don't have one this ounce of regret in terms of physical loss. Mm. Me just say, it could have been, could have been nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tina Turner. Oh my God. Yeah, me. You may call people right. names, you know what I'm saying? But me don't know, maybe me not ambitious or something. <laughs> but but me not feel like I me think, lose. I think, did, I think they have your way at the time, man. No, me not love to know, me not feel like, me just like, hmm. You know what I mean? But me do other things and feel could have big as that, you know. Right. Just say, we don't have the opportunities in Jamaica. Enough mm. great music making, but we don't have the, the machinery to make them big like that. You know true, what I'm saying? True. So, me look at music different from other people. <laughs> Not from it's very, very side. obvious. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. So you also, so Jimmy Cliff, you did, you have done work with Jimmy Cliff. You did a lot of work with Steely and Cleavy. No. No? No, man. You know, don't work with Steely. Thing. One and two thing. Yeah, one and two thing. I yeah. remember there was a Freddie McGregor, McGregor song on me here. Every dance. Me always say there's a song there. Groove in my girl, which is fine. Which is fine. We hear every dance, every country. In the world, every sound system, is, it, nowadays it comes early juggling. It's, it's one of my production that. Right? But there's a song of Freddie Freddie Magalhães. I mean, I me play for that, you know. Me play that. Yes. I play, I, I play on that song. Yeah. So it, it, that's the thing. I think, I, me, I was a thing of Celia and Cleavy. So I never do much okay, of that. Okay. But me and Cleavy, because Cleavy was in, in, come the in crowd, you know. Mm, oh, so, so Cleavy was. After, after we left, me and Robin uh, left in the kid. So in my, we, in my, we, we have like a little like family, so mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. and Plus, him brothers Dalton who died, they were, they were a friend a long, long time. You know what I mean? But not everybody did, we didn't work with Celia and Cleavy that much. Okay. But, Whole lot of, you know what I'm saying, man? Even though I'm saying I produce from Scatter Lights yes. to, to uh, I've worked to Popcorn. Popcorn. I have worked as a musician from far more mm. to far more. Yes. But, you know what I'm saying? As whatever. I Rolling mean, Stones. What, what, what about they did, they did work with persons from within Just the Rolling Stones. Yeah, man. Garnet Silk. Ah, yes, mm. yes. Um, I was producing his album when he died. Oh, yeah? It was this album. It, yeah. I was approached by uh, Craig Kalman, the president for Atlantic. He called me and asked me to, to, to work with Garnet. And I, I, I was doing it, and then me and him had a confrontation that it stopped. Yes. <laughs> Which is natural. I, I'm not afraid of that. I'm a producer, yeah. artist. When, whenever you hire me to produce you, you make me I be produce, the boss. Yeah, I produce. So you put me in charge. Mm -hmm. And I'm very reasonable, and I'm very. Flexible. Uh, flexible, yes. And I have to I try to be as intelligent as possible. And if I'm missing on something, I turn to somebody uh, and say, mm. you know I mean, but then, I, I, you know, I, I mean, I've been privileged to work with like Shaka Khan, you know. Yes. I understand Shaka Khan and Barry Saman. And to me, that's one a great experience. It's great. She, she show, I, I just watch her and she, she just show me in that little moment, mm -hmm. that little few days of work, 
the, of, of the depth of certain things. <laughs> the depth of certain things. <laughs> yes, yes. They get it, they get it, they get it, they get yes, it. Yes, yes. We mentioned um, putting up resistance with Beres. Oh, you did other, you have done other stuff with Beres too. Can you just mention the check account thing? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Beres. We <laughs> just, just wrote up on a song with, with, with Beres. Beres and Popcorn did a song about Mama. Yes. We just do the remix. And 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 me, me say Barry's here. I'm going crazy. In fact, it's gonna be. It's supposed to be Barry's now. Barry's popcorn and sizzler. Cause they choose a mama song. Oh, she went up there, went there today to do it. In fact, that so, makes sense. Yeah, man, it's murder. Come here with a tell Shane. Say any dancer song me here, me can turn it into a reggae mm. without changing. Just take, just give me the voice. And, and I can click. change it. Yeah, man. And so she and I said, you know, me, me always think, say, things are doing like crack. Them could become same. Give me that song last week. Yes. I'm going to do it. And I'm so happy. So happy. And I am so happy that he's happy. Yes. That's my job, Mr. Please. You were yeah. instrumental in the world, really and truly, taking on Richie Spice. Because he was there, you know, doing it. But it's when you got involved that people really and truly them years. I don't know if he was doing anything. I think he did one song before with, with um Junior, with um Star, Dennis Star. Dennis Star. Oh yes. Yeah, they didn't do one song before, and then uh, it, and it was a tough gang. Junior, Dennis Star working for Tough Gang, but then I was working at Tough Gang doing my own thing. Oh okay. And it, Richie just you know me had studio book every day, every day doing my thing for like three years you know except Sundays. And you bought the studio for three for years. It. Yeah, man. When we leave rehab, I had so much work and I had money to do that. I mean, just have record, 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 record. I you know, say, out of those recordings, I don't even put out, I don't put out 10 songs. I may have hundreds of songs record. So, I so said, I come out yesterday studio just to listen, listen to what listen. I have. I have tons of tons of music, which don't really, we get bored with music. He's racist, but it was my own production. But by the finish, I almost finished my title next. I mean, I just put it on one side. But I thought, when I think about my children and my mother and so on, and so what I could have done for them with those money. Mm. Like each song costs a lot of money. Yes. From the then, production. Per, um, yeah, the production mm. costs. I can't, it's not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not the engineer. I can engineer. I used to. I don't know no more. I don't play bass. Or where, so you where, have where, to pay no the more. musician and the pay, engineers. Yes, I have to pay everybody. And by... The hard to I say. have a song them sitting pants around, man. Tons of them. So let me decide now, say, since this whole new thing with the social media and all mm. of these different things, I decide for the rest of my release, lifetime I'm gonna start releasing. Yeah, put them, you know what I mean? I don't even have to go to down deep production thing to mix them and fine-tune them. Cause I reached five song, it was done in Grooving. It was done like this. And I got a call that Shakadee was on players, was on Island, so Chris Buck is the boss. Mm. And then Spanner Banner was with Island at the same time, and their brothers. And then they heard that I was doing something, so Chris wanted to hear the song. He heard that I did a song, and he sent for it to hear it. And I turned to Shane Brown, as the first song Shane Brown ever mixed officially. Because people used to check Shane to mix, and I tell him, no, don't mix with nobody. You know. Wait till you mix with me first. But any day you mix with me, <laughs> nobody yeah. can tell you, say, it does sound good. It's your perspective as a mixer. So if they don't like it, when they leave the studio. And in those days, the indie producer have to be there when it's being mixed. It's like nowadays when producers, producers send the mixer engineer in Montego Bay and him in Kingston, he's not there. Nobody can mix none of my song unless me. Me have to be there. You have to be there listening mix. Yeah, man. I might not want to be there for the five hours or ten hours. But, you are, you are but I have to be there for at least the last hour. And if, when you spend ten days and we come last hour, I say, hmm, okay, bring up that. Change that. Take off that. No, turn on that. Yeah. See there? All right. Because I trust that engineer enough that he'll bring it to a almost level. ready. Yes. Yeah. No. And then you come finish it yeah, off. Yeah, there's not such thing you can sing and mix, sing to mix in LA. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I send a mix to, say, Banzai, who makes a word of the Marley's, them stuff, and all this great thing, Madonna, everybody, stuff in LA, or I send it to Jimmy Douglas, who makes Jay Z, last album, and being something. When I send it to him, they do nothing to it. No, no, you know, when I mix, then God just put it and stop it out, because they know me. I don't know where they know about me from. And then contact me, then once the Clive, how it sound? What should I have? And so I say, okay. Bim bam bam, boom bam bam, boom bam, and the back and forth until I'm happy. If I was there, I would have, you know. But me can send something to mix and get it back and say, good and like that. Mm. No, no, no. And a second. Me's a real musician. Man. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You brought through, well, you helped 
to, to bring Dean Fraser to the masses? You, you were instrumental in that? I always say that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, always say that. Yeah. <laughs> but when I hear him tell him story, I'm not say that. You I never heard that. him say that. Yeah. But I do. And I say it and I never hear him say that about it. Mm. <laughs> I don't feel that I say it, say it. Because let me tell you something. It's not going to take nothing from him. And uh, it would have something to me. Right. <laughs> but it is so. Mm. He, he was just a, a bad musician, a player. He may be into what I look at things, but he wasn't one away. One away is recording musicians in on every country in the world, a special breed of musicians, mm. you know. And I am one of them. I'm one of the elite from the day I went into the studio. <laughs> but, yes, and a, a, a band musician is people who take up and go play, mm. copy. But he is very good beyond that. He's an instrumentalist who can improvise very much, far more than ever I could ever have done it. He was discovered by okay. me. I mean, I brought him into the, I take, I always say that. Mm. I, I would love to hear him say it one day. Mm. I, watch, I, and it's, you know, ugh. It just me. I'm a good friend. Me, me live. You know, Bridget, man. We have family. We picnic them. Live together. Grow together till. You know, all of us live that way, you know. But when I first worked with Dean, it was just it was the name I was called. They used to call him Youth Sax. Now they're the Dean Fraser. Now they're the Dean Fraser. Youth Sax. Dean Fraser. When we start giving credit, can call him Dean Fraser. What's your name? So what's your name? So Dean Fraser. All right. Say, I mean, right to the to the producer. Which producer those days are not producer like when me is they should they take credit to do what I do now, but they are the man who was spending money or the woman. Mm. You know what I mean? The first but the thing executive was, producer. They were the executive producer. So when they said to me, say, Clive, who plays sax? I'm put Dean Fraser. I didn't put youth sax. Before that, he was youth sax. Played Sonny Branch. He was very good, very mm. talented. Just like him, he still is now. But I brought him into my, my section because first I was in an album for, for Miss Pattinger. I know the first when the old lady will get credit. And and uh, our national awards as 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 the first female producer. Sonia. Sonia Passenger. She, I never seen her in the studio done that. She gonna sit and listen. She never ever come and say, no, me not, not even to say, me not like that. Cause when you say me not like that, you say what you like. Mm. But she's not even that. She, you know what I mean? She just come in and she listen and she start discuss label and jacket and sales and shipment and all that. <laughs> anyway, she asked me to do an album with culture. With Errol Brown. Errol okay. Brown, of course, was yes. the one who ran our studio with Shelley's treasure. And then she said, Errol, I climb around the thing, you know. So I climb, make sure don't, and it, that, that, that day was the arms, for the arms to go on the album. And she said, make sure she did, she wanted my fresh approach. She said she didn't want Tammy McCook on the great satellite one. Yes. And they just come and play fast, didn't they? Which is exactly what happened, they wanted to happen. So she tell Errol, and Errol, you know, he's not a serious man, I go on like my bad man, I don't know. He just, he just say, if you tell him, and you're the boss, you tell him, said, I saw it go. I'm just, just go there, so. we go there, and the first song, they started to do something, and we were like, Yeah, so the first song with, with International Herb, them start to play something. So, true, and some big giants, you know, come and tell me, a little boy, so, and I'll sneak and I'll watch them through Lindsay Little Theatre. You know, we Tom McCook and all these great people. So, I mean, not really, but them respect me. Right. I can tell you, everyone of my mate, true, from me leave Stone Hill, everybody say, Yes, my youth. Every one of the great singers and everybody in them, them hear about me. So anyway, them start playing some and go to Errol Brown and say, Errol, that's one of the cartoon thing, you know, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And they were just for the talk and said, Tommy, Clive say, and them just tell me one string of bad word yeah. and gone. And we didn't have no hand players. And, but remember, Somebody, somebody said to me, say, what about youth sax? And I said, you know, say, me hear about you there. Where me can I find one? And I said, now my Peter Sonny Brush and I'm a drunk on the lounge up here. I think I tell you, Wednesday, they might play there tonight, man. So I went up there and stood up far from the stage. And the band started so playing, and they must sing. And the band not playing, they must sing. Long, long, long. <laughs> until into the sax and start so playing. I just walk over and train them stage high and I mean, touch up on the legs. And I say, my youth, and I say, Clive. And I say, you know me? You know, everybody know you, man. <laughs> I say, look, I'm going to treasure the studio tomorrow for tape and some music. You know how we, I don't, I'm saying, I'm a real man, I come from, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and he, he brought him in on that, and it, it was a whole album. And then next day, you know, I mean, it might be pretty ready to come, I was rushing it. Right. Many work pretty fast, because I'm very quick, and, you know, me, me like people quick. So I wouldn't leave him. I say, da 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 da, to him in place. Da 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 da, him not to work it out. You know what I mean? And um, so, you know, me have session every day. So mm. next day, I say, Dean, tomorrow, this sir. Next day, this sir. Next day, this sir. Next day, this sir. So that's what's his beginning. And mm. so recording, 
thing on it. I mean, just, I mean, just like him tell it, say somebody one day tell it. Yes. It doesn't matter if you do. Yes. You mentioned Sonny Bradshaw name a couple of th t times. You mentioned... <laughs> I did? <laughs> what you word? You mentioned Sonny Bradshaw name. Because you said Dean was in Sonny Bradshaw, oh, but really? something, something, something. Is Sonny Bradshaw your cousin? I found out when he died. So he is your cousin? Yeah. My you are his me. cousin? Yeah, my mother told me that, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Related. Yes. Mm -hmm. J.C. Lodge. What role you play around that part there? She was just, I'm going to say, same Allah. I met her through slave. She and Allah they were neighbors in New Kingston. And when I come from over New York, I saw her, I was travel, travel, travel. And I'm going to say Allah was in Kingston. Allah apartment. He just leave it for me and gone somewhere else. Yeah. And then she lived next door with her husband. And um, so I met her like that. And then Allah told me one day that she, she, she has such a right and she wanted to sing. And she let me hear her, she let me hear her stuff. And, Nice little stuff, but it's not the stuff where I think like to do. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I remember me not a person who got produced people. I got, you know, you, I you have to come see to you and you right. pay for the production. And I do the production. Because producing is a professional job, you know. You know? So anyway, he me introduced me to her and I promised, there was nice people, I promised to record to do something. And then um, they come to Joe Gibbs Studio, mainly I was working out of there mainly when I was around. And, uh, but you know, drugs you know, up a gambling and go on. Up a, it's a real type of ghetto vibes, you know. So you have the good and the bad and the ugly. Mm, Everybody there, there. Go on, yeah, man. You, you, you have Berry's there, you have Master Griffiths, you have Dennis Brown, you have Dynamite Diamonds, you have Tamlins, you have everyone is. And all of the music, Willie Lindo, Bob Live, Body Passing, you are doing something. So, um, when they come there, she always hide one second. The man, then when they see a woman, they start talking about things, you know what I'm saying? So, my promise to them, because I was going to do a Tyrone Taylor had done a song which me had helped him to do. Mm -hmm. If he was alive, no one had claimed part of the publishing and, and production too. Yes. Cottage in the Grill. Okay? Cottage when in he the Grill. get the money, him, him tells the client, he get the money, he wanted to do a tune and him help him. I remember help him to lay the track. I played piano actually too. Just like Jason had someone loving me, I played piano. And me help him. And at, it was at Tough Gang, when Tough Gang was at, up at Oak Road. Studio. Oh, okay. And we remember we went to Accurus and for him to do the vocal, me and him catch a fight. I must get physical and draw a big chopper. So I said, he must sing the song for him. He said, you can't. He said, sing. He's always, he's a, he's a great singer, but he must start singing the song by Adley Mean. Sing slow, slow. He said, oi, sing the song for us. Do my song. So I said, sing the song for him. I'm going to big chopper. I said, we do that. And so you know, it was a big confrontation. Like, <laughs> sing the song. Then I me, me said, get Dean, make Dean play for him. And get Dean play the thing. Became a big hit. And then some, other, some people just hear it and sign him, you know. And they are, he asked me again to work on the album. So I tell JC lads, say, come, because we're going gonna to work, in, work on that album. I went by Joe Gibbs, we should them work on the album, everybody happy, good, a good day's work. Um, end of the day, I forget her, because she go hide. Mm. She go hide on the corner, like how this is a place, a place all about the mm. So I come, and she comes and say, try to forget me again. I say, ah, June, Chama, well, you never let me know June. When, when, with June. June. Yeah. And, um, but we were all leaving, I mean, I say, I'm going to pack up. I mean, say, Bridget, hold on there. And I say, well, I'm crying. I say, Joe, I promise you that. She said, Climb, man. I said, Bridget, I promise, sir, man, and go, me have, me have to go away tomorrow. Come now, I'm going to record a tune for her. I said, Tell her, I'm going to say, I'm hungry. And we said, I'm going to make up some money and say, Go out and go buy food. The cross with a tasty them. And man, we come back and um, before, you know, when she paid me, I said, Joe, I don't like none of them tune. But I wanted to do a song. But and then Errol E.T. from Joe Gibbs said, He said, Show me an album. It's a, it's a Charlie Pride album. I'm telling you that somebody from a record shop in Trinidad had sent it and tick off three songs and said them song would sound good reggae. Mm. So I listened to the first one and said, no, next one. It's a bit, it's a bit of a listen. I said, this one song. Good. Someone love you. Yeah. I said, this one song good. June, learn a tune until we come back. And she, she never had a chance in it, but she wasn't happy about that. But she was getting a chance to record. Mm -hmm. And when we go in and man them record it, and as, as, I, as I said before, when we come up, we hold the box to mark on the, the tape box, the name of the song, like the number seven song on the tape. Someone loves you on them. Say, June, my name? And she said, June Lodge. And I said, oh, Sam, I like that. You're not clear what you mean. I said, which other name you have? And she said, Cara Lodge. And I said, Cara. She said, my big name is Cara. And I said, OK, from today, on record, your name JC. She said, no, I said, hey, either name JC Lodge or you don't name no name. We don't bother with this. And she said, <laughs> and she did a little rough vocal, and I mean, fly out next thing the tune came out. Willie them finished it and become a big massive hit, cause enough 
enough problem and she get robbed hard. Yeah. And it's the first time I noticed something. I see the record Joe Gibbs stop it from being on in the British top twenty just because she wouldn't sign a contract. But the song was said, you have to sell a certain amount of copies per day you know, to be in the, the top 10 or the right. 20 in England. Like 40 tons copy a day now. The song was sell the amount, but he refused to let it go on the, on the chart because, because she wouldn't sign a contract. You know what I mean? I, I mean, we see that she uh, uh, she'd have probably cry, but it gone already. Mm. Yeah, I'm, oh, if you talk to one of them down, we know so she not live by that side there. Yeah. No, she, mm. she, she's, she's with she's five, man. She's, she's with five. She's not England, is she? She'll yeah, well, when she come a yard, man, cause in person with her. <laughs> in her future, in her future, in her future. After COVID. After, we, we see her go. You did some, some vocals, some, some songs, no? Lizard? Uh, yeah, that was a, a mistake, an accident. <laughs> <laughs> it never meant to be. It never meant to be, mm -hmm. no? No. Yeah, um, like I tell you, just like a milk and you end up doing yeah. it and then call it in crowd. I uh, was just, I just wrote that song, show like a domestic thing. My, my missus begged me to go buy something up Reddy's Road. And I give her money, I made sure I give her money. Like a young couple, till she go, go shopping for the weekend. And then she would still make a work in the country, the in crowd, come in like 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning. And 6.37, she beg me to walk up Reddy's Road buy something. I mean, you live near Reddy's Road, you know. I mean, on the way up, I just start singing the song, the peace that I have slowly fade away. No more will I cry. No, my eyes are dry. I mean, I said mean, I mean, lyrics and, I, and, I, and start singing it. I'm going to reach right to the store where she sent me, I'm going to the bus. I'm going to jump to the bus. Come here, the key for yeah, the studio. Yeah, I'm going to the And it became a massive hit. I couldn't believe it. Massive, massive. <laughs> and then before I became a hit, when I did it, if, if anybody hear the song, you hear me laugh out in it. A Saturday. Because, because Saturday. Because somebody walking in the studio, Mikey Boo, see Mikey, Mikey Boo, Boo, with a guy from New York. I was just telling the man him outside it. I'm going to see him, I'm going to see them laugh, because I'm going to sing. Mm. I mean, I'm going to laugh. And then we just do a rough mix. Like, I'm going to tell you about yes. Shane Bob before. Quick rough mix, and Richard Spice song. Quick rough mix. Chris Back, you love it. It was sort of 10 minutes. Thing, reference. Okay. And so I say these new things, stuff I, this stuff I discovered, I want to spend them more than half an hour, fix them up you know, and put them on. Yeah. Shoot them around. Yeah, I would. Anyway, um, Satai, the man asked me, went away, I forget about him, forget about the show, because I was going to wipe off the tape. Just to hear it. Mm. And then he said, No, man, give me nothing, give me. Call me two weeks after that and say, Everybody in New York love the song. He said, Me, everybody. I'm going to put my name there now. <laughs> he must say, No, that's what I call you. Which name have I put? I mean, I have a brother who tell me the same thing. My brother, he's two years mm. younger than me, my next, next second child from my mother. He tell me the same take part as a GC, DC festival thing, and it, it, it had won for St. Catherine. Oh, I okay. never hear him sing, you know. But I give my brother a break. Yeah. So I just tell him, say, Willard. And I say, what? Lizard? I say, yeah, man. And Lizard, anything I say. And he say, Lizard. And he forget about it and hang on the phone. <laughs> next car, I get it. Number one and WLIB, which is a Sata Eye by Lizard. 18 weeks was number one. And, and, and it was a joke thing. You had WLIB and WBLS mm -hmm. with Frankie Cracker. Two stations in the same building, same. Bro. Oh, okay. The two and it biggest. Was number and, one and, and, and both of them. WLS was the biggest station in America. Biggest. You know what I mean? And, and, and then it, we knew in England it became number one for 23 weeks. 20. And the Black Echoes that shot. And people record come me after people are calling me. I mean, I'm a duck, cause I would never reproduce that. I just did that as a joke. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, I, anyway, a whole lot of things happen. I just shut it down. Mm. I even did an album. Right. In one day. <laughs> that was a Saturday album. Yeah. Nineteen. I didn't like that. Seventy-six sometimes. Yeah. I, Last, the last time I remember you Christian, I listened to it and laugh on the phone and discover a month or two ago. Yes. I said, Clive, are you this? I said, yeah. I'm a little pure laugh, pure laugh. I said, oh my God. So you did also orthodox <laughs> dub. That was instrumental only? That yeah, was dub, dub. Yeah, I mean, whole empathy. Okay. Then, you, 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 bad, yeah. bad, bad, and all of them something there. What is that? Thing? Bad, wasn't that an album? Bad, bad, bad. Oh, that is recent. Recent? Yeah, yeah okay. like two years ago. Uh, okay, less, cool, yeah, no? Yeah, yeah. Cool, mm -hmm. cool, 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 cool. Mm -hmm. And the Blue Lizard, that was 2020, it's, recent. It's, yeah, yeah, that's it's in Bad Bad Bad, it's from okay. the same, same collection. Okay, cool. I think the album is called Any Road or something like that. Oh. Yeah. 
That's where Jimmy Cliff's studio is, and that's where I did yeah, it. No, okay. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. so I go on. Yeah. You have been signed as the go-to producer for VP? No. No? Who had a relationship with VP then? VP is... Boy, if it was for VP, I don't know how I would manage. Um, you know, I hear all type of stories and things. Yeah, yeah, I hear but, all type of stories. Yeah, but mm, VP, I have known, I know Chris the, the family and, from mm. before. I mean, even Chris and you, but I realized, say, you know, I'm just maybe a few years older than him. But um, um, I mean, I always beg to work with him, but they, they always work with what was happening. I mean, he's a controversial person. I mean, me mash up session or anything. You know, that's mm -hmm. a mistake. I mean, I was, you know, I get, I get, you know, what I do, a little less of that. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mash up where I walk, I left the money and bigger bus fare. You know yeah? What I mean? yeah, 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 I used to do that. I was, uh, there's a story with me and Chris Blackwell. I, I, I was still in the museum there, they them look at me. Yeah, with the Abyssinian's album too. Uh -huh. Yes, I, Island Records never hired me to do anything yet, you know. Mm. And it was through something with that same same essay I just said a while ago. But anyway, um, uh, <laughs> Super uh, eye. sorry, what, what, what was the question about again? <laughs> VP, the relationship. Oh, yeah, no, no, a VP uh, about six, seven, eight years ago, I was doing a project. I'm working on a soundtrack mm. for a movie with Chris Martin, you know, Destiny movie, you know, Destiny, about it? yes. And the, the, the producer, director had asked me from before the movie start. He had me, asked me to be, he, he watched an interview yes. with me and he asked me to be involved, to be, do this, to be the musical director, the, to do the soundtrack, produce, so on, so on, so on. And I agree. And while I was doing it, Christian, which I know a long time, and him talking, you know, but we never worked for her. So mm -hmm. he, asked, he, he, asked, he asked if he'd like to meet me, and we had a meeting, and he, he told me, he was like, are you, you know, Etana? He liked, if I, he liked, me to do some work with Etana. No, I'm like it's time to do a song in the movie. So oh, okay. if I could arrange it. You know what I mean? And I um I talked to the director. I said, yeah man, the director trust me, musically I'm, you know, and Etana, they came up with a song, I think Sherry, um Sherry I read a song, I Rise. I rise. I heard some right. new stuff going around Etana and, and some controversy, but that's exactly. And when I did it and he was very happy and then I had produced something for Chris Martin, and Chris Martin was signed to the label. Oh, okay. For the, for the for VP. For, yeah, but, but I did something for Chris Martin because he was the star of the movie, and he was a singer. So I'd been a few songs, and they, they asked me to work with them, you know, uh, to do some work mm -hmm, for them. Mm -hmm. So I've been, work, I work for VP. I have a non exclusive oh, okay. producer contract. So you, you can work with other people? I work with them, they, they don't care. Mm. Um, my publishing is, is with um, Greensleeve, and Greensleeve is owned by the same family. Oh, right, right. So whichever right. way I work, they are, they are part of basically anything, and I'm okay with that. Mm. And they make sure I'm okay, you know, because. <laughs> yeah, make sure you're okay. Can yeah, I yeah, do your work, man? Well, even when I don't work, if even I don't work for six months, it's still I okay. Still, they, they make me, I'm fine, I'm good, they make sure I'm good. <laughs> And if, I, if I'm on the limb, I can call yes. when I do get through to the general. If I go to the limb, yes. eh, I can call. And I, I, um, VP and I have a good relationship, relationship like that, right. but they allow me to do whatever I want to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I can only talk good about them, and um, I really appreciate them. And they, they gave me verbal guarantee that as long as I can work, I, I, You'll be paid. I'll be paid. Yes. The, how VP take care of me, I, mm. I don't even know if I, I, I've sold so much records to cut. Even if everything they give me, they, they have been to a, cover an that. advance. So I'm very happy. And I keep good relationship with, with them. And, you know, and they, Makes sense. And they, yeah, and they, and they, they it's a mutually beneficial if relationship. I, if I jump up and I get too excited away with me, jump over the bar, I say, Clive. Calm down. And I say, why? I say, you know what I do? And I say, yeah? Oh, okay. Mm. <laughs> yes. Yes, man. So, yeah, basically. Alpha Blondie, Burning Spear, Chaka Khan, Stevie Wonder, Maxi Priest, Peter Touch, Kranix, Jamil, Khalid, DJ Khalid? No, man. No. No, no, no. no, no. no? This is, no, it's Khal Khaled. 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 Yeah, it means a, a, a French, Arab, French artist. Oh, Khaled. So universal, yeah. Ah. Khaled. Spell the same way. Culture. Which culture? Joseph Hill. Yeah, go on to a concord name. Other names are called, I've been involved in somewhere. Yes. Not all as a producer. Not all as a producer. No, 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 no. What else have you been doing with some of these names? Arrangement? I, I am a musician, basic musician, okay, yeah, so yeah, I, I'm either a musician or I'm, I'm a, 
or a musician and an, or I'm a ranger or I'm a producer or I'm a combination of any yeah. amount. Right. Or I've worked as an engineer too. Because he, he put in a business and me engineered. Right. It's me and Barry Salon was in the studio. Both are you alone? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I play everything by myself. Mm. And that's how it started. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so uh, you, you, we could keep calling names too for, for long, 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 long And we time. have mentioned many names before, because we talk about Scatterlites and the Abyssinians and Garnet mm. Silk and tons all and of them tons. people name there. Them, name them, name them, tons and tons. Richie Spice and... Yeah, and, and uh, you know, and as we say... J.C. Lodge and... Yeah, man, I would mention uh, Jack Cure. Jack Cure. Yeah, but I, I feel... Max I take Romeo, pleasure. Max Carl Darkins. I, I take pleasure in working, like say, with Not Nice. I work pretty work with producers too, you know. Oh, you work with that nice. Yeah, yeah. we work a lot. Yeah, we we yeah, we yeah. I'm yeah, man. I work in, I work, I work with Shane Brown. I work mm. with, I work a lot of young producers, I work with them and and I kinda of mentor in some cases. Them call me Uncle Clive though. Uncle uh, Clive. Makes uh, sense. Uh, Uncle uh, Clive. Uh, our elder. Our uh, elder. <laughs> the great Azul. Uh, Soldier. Uh, uh, no, no, the long time no come Soldier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You still, you still, learned, you still love it. I maintain some things like that. Yes. It fortifies as a, as a human person. Mm. And you know what I'm saying? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, Soldier, I stop you from getting. So me get gunshots. I mean, I have to run many times. So that not stop you. <laughs> but it's probably teach how to survive. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. You're still mad in love with the music, though, sir, Clive. But we still see the passion and flow naturally. Uh, you know, it says really lately, we kind of realize that you say, love me and love. I want me to do. Oh, yeah, but do. I have to say I love it. You love I it. I have to say I love it. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Looking at the journey, sir, sir, Hunt, is there anything? You, you say a few things we regret already still. But is there anything you then do differently if you get the chance to redo the, the musical journey? Ooh, leap. <laughs> Starting back from when I was a young man who yeah. to I have sons, you know, and they're not listening. They're not listening to me. I was the same way. Eh? And so what I realized people something when you're young, you know, to you know, you get to the idea and say, I know enough and you run gone. Mm. Even though I studied and studied and studied and studied, because when my friends are gone party and everywhere, I yeah, mean you know that. Me study straight. Straight, straight. Even Nella, anyway, I studied. You know, every book. Me, me, some man, me studied to me. I could write up, find all the writers, them, and I carry them, you know. You know what I mean? I remember I was in New York at Samash Music, which is one of Samash, the. Samash, yes. I was in the biggest Samash story where you the superstars. I was there. And when the Japanese they make stuff and say it, and sometimes not even name on it, I mean, just call them back and I start to them say, so why don't you make it do this and this? And, and so I remember one of the Japanese say, oh, this must be Clive Hunt. I say yes, and say, ah, we do that on the next one. It's money the much I make. Yeah. I could just make a little thing so I could make this fix new thing. keyboard, do this. Listen, they save it for six months' time, they get a new one. You next one. But, you know what I mean? I've been, I've been lucky to experience many, 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 many things. Mm. And yes, and, and teach. And teach. Yeah, and yes. I love that. What would you say is the single greatest? Well, let me put it this way. Looking at the things that you have been involved in, is there any one thing that makes you very proud when you look at it, say yes, I was a part of that? Oh, quite a few. But one of the, one of the, uh, quite a few. Mm -hmm. But if you turn about a song or music or a yeah. project, there's one song we talk about a, 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 a few times, a, a, a more than the rest. Only because I travel globally, I've traveled many countries. Mm -hmm. I know people who travel more than me, but the one thing I'm sure of, Say, for example, if you go to say Russia, Ukraine, some real far country from us, which is totally like, uh, mm -hmm. um, on national radio, you're not going to hear Bob Marley, you know. Yeah, if you do yeah. hear him, it's, an, it's a passing thing. Mm -hmm. But there's one song which I, I was a part of, which anywhere you go, any of those countries, any country, Brazil, anywhere you go, you hear it many times a day on radio and on TV, in commercial and stuff. And it's, I can see clearly now. Jimmy Clay. There's no song which is, 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 uh, is played more. It's more universal than that one. That it, no, there's no Yes, Jamaican there's song. no Jamaican that's no, more universal no than artists. that one. By no artist. None. None, you know, none. No matter who, whichever name you can call. Jimmy Cliff, mm -hmm. that song. Um, 
Um, I'm proud of this song. Remember, the song isn't the man. Right, they're proud of the, the song. Sir, or the circumstances to get it done. The song. The song. I, I am proud because I was a part of it. And uh, especially, and I was a part of it when it, the original one was being made by Janet Nash. Mm. I wasn't involved, but I was there was. in the studio when it was being done. And then when we were asked, Jimmy was asked to do it, and I was asked to produce. I, I, I co-produced. I've always said it, and it's credited on the record. Nice. Co-produced by Clive Hunt and Computer Paul Enton. Right? But something happened to me. This is important. A month ago, <clears throat> China Smith. Earl China Smith. China. Mm. I, less than a, uh, yeah, a month ago I was at his house for a special function, and so you know, and, and, and we're talking man and man because we have great respect for each other as man and as musician. And, and he said, "Claire, tell me the story about um, um, that song." I say, "Nothing, just do it." Me and Paul do it. He say, "You know, say Paul, tell me say I'm alone to that song." Eh? It's, no, at first, me and I out to this now, you know. I say, "What, what do you mean?" He said, "No, I'm saying my own." He said, "No, him alone play the instruments." But it's me and him produce it. And when I went home back, you know, uh, kinda, um, I was kind of, I think in the whole night I was saying, shit, why would why Paul say that? So I called Wayne Harmon. He didn't play artist. Wayne Harmon played guitar. He played uh -huh. keyboards. And he programmed the drum machine. Right there. Right? And, and um, he said, because Wayne Harmon lives in Miami. I found his number. I called other people and get his number. I called him and said, Wayne, like, Six o'clock in the morning. Wayne, sorry for car is early. I'm, I'm saying, I'm what? Mama say, um, I can see clearly. Oh, how it go again? I'm telling him, I'm saying, who produce it? I'm saying, what do you mean? Azul, no, you produce it. I'm saying, no, man, I don't know me produce it. I'm me and Paul. I'm saying, Clive, you win, I'm saying. I'm saying, I always wonder why you always say you're on Paul. Because all Paul did was play. And the day when we did this session, Paul was never ever involved anymore. He wasn't there when we were doing the vocals. He wasn't there when we were doing the editing, compiling, because Jimmy singing about 20 times on different track. I would cut it up piece, piece, piece to and make it into it one. He wasn't there. I mean, Errol Brown did that. And then it was mixed. He wasn't involved in that. So I said, why, pa Wayne, I mean, I nothing like that. And I said, say, Clive, remember, say, PPL, which is the British music agency that pays musicians mm -hmm. to work on music. Your music. When you enter your player, you get paid later, residuals. He said to me, say, you know, you know, 10 years ago, I never get no money off of that song after from I get paid, you know. And PPL, you don't remember that? This, was, this is what Wayne said. You don't remember that PPL told me that if you can get Clive Hunt to write a letter to say that you work on the song, you can start getting your back money and, and all. And he said, it was you who gave me a letter. I said, oh, yes, yes. So I said, so, so why Paul would say that? I said, I don't know, Wayne. I said, let me call Fata. Because Fata was the engineer, Fata Marshall. You know what I mean? I'm going to call Fata. This is after me. I said, Fata. Oh, oh, I'm going to tell him what China said to me, and what China said to Paul said. And him say, Zul. Him say, Zul. You know, me always wonder, say, why you give me credit on a tune there? Eh? All Paul do a play, you know. So him say. But I would still say, you know, I had to ask my daughter's husband, just on the weekend, to contact Sony, because I haven't received any royalties from it for about eight years. So I don't want to know if I'm not receiving royalties because they stopped doing paperwork. Mm -hmm. You know, or something, or his Paul made say something. So he just went in, and Saturday, I couldn't believe, Saturday morning, Sony sent me back about four emails to, to upgrade me in the system. So we're waiting back now on a, a thing to say. So that song made me proud, mm -hmm. very proud. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yes. I would like my grandchildren, great grandchildren, to know that I was in, <laughs> grand, grandfather did, was, that, was a that, musician. Yes. Yeah. Slide down bar, you made mention of a couple. Mention of him a couple of times. You taught him how to play the drum machine? No. No. Sly a drummer man, Sly a genius. So generally, the electronics in, in, in music okay, for okay, drums. Okay. Because I was at Samash. You see, a lot of to... things are written online, you know. So, you know, when we had oh, the research, yeah, you have no, to sift through no. these things. No, sorry. Yeah, man, that's no, all man, right. No, I introduced man. him to, yes. to, 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 to first syndrome. Yes. The first time. Yeah. Puck up, puck up, puck up. And I'm going to give him one of them and say, Sly, come here in New York. He was there. Whenever they come to New York, they come. I'm going to link you. And there's a stadium, the Peter Trush, all of them. Mm. Rolls on, turn on power. And I was there all instruments. I'm mean, going to show him this. And I remember when I show him a day, he go like a kid, man. He said, oh my God, Clive, what? And he said, play. And said, psh, 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 psh. And that was it. That Next thing here, pull up to my bumper, baby. You're Dennis Brown. Have you ever had them thing there? A few things me introduced, but it's just, 
It's natural. I'm not going to take credit for all political things. All political things. I could, wherever I can. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> wherever I can. Yeah. You made mention that green sleeves are your publish responsible for your publishing. Presently. So you are okay as it relates to collecting your royalties and your stuff for the work that you have done, that you have... Well, green sleeve is my pub publishing is, is, is... Publishing contracts don't really go more than three years, you know. If you hey. go over that, it's illegal. You have to re-sign. Re yeah, okay. Man. So, but my present publisher is there, man. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. You're yeah. fine with it. Yeah, man. Sounds they give me statements and everything. And, Sounds and good. And even sometimes, I even... Um, I call and say, oh, Mr. I need some money. And they'll say, oh, Claire, we have this for you. I say, but I need this section. And they'll say, okay. I mean, and they, they'll do it. They, they'll give me what I want in advance. Every now and then. I'm still one of the poorest. I used to sing a song, you know. And I, me, I'm one of the poorest musicians, but not the worst. Yeah, you know one of the poorest so musicians. Still, <laughs> well, that, well, still the producer, worst. but that don't mean I don't make the money. I right. just give it away, huh? Right, and, you know, sorry, yeah. me like a Santa, you know, like a Santa. I realized though yeah. before we get at that, the the, the 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 genius of the man is just is just a pure greatness. Like Mister Don here, sir. I mean, I look by your expressions, I mean, I listen, I mean, realize that mm -hmm. you're not normal, and well, you don't get the credit in the street, or you forget, sir, hunt man. Oh, I was telling a story a while ago before we come. <laughs> yeah. Say, they, they had the reggae month. Yeah, oh, yeah. yesterday. Okay. And it was on radio, and then <laughs> and it, me, I wanted oh, to go. Oh, the big eight thing you talk about. I mean, it's a big eight. Yeah. Just say, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Tell oh, me right, earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what that? But I said go, and I don't know why. But for the people who yeah. really know the music, I love the music. Know that Clive on fingerprints are in many places in the music, man. I take more credit to say for a lot of the young producers and 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 um, engineers. A lot of them, me, and me, me, and me. Then come to your school. Yeah, man. But that, some of them won't say it. Some of the biggest one them. Um, but I'll tell them them face. I'm going to tell them they're just silent. Mm. Yeah, but they, is that, it's a regret. And they will not say it. Yeah, one of them say that. Say, yes. Clive, but me take pleasure in what I do. I watch the young people talk about them and say them. In the country where I say, big concert, big festival, I say, I look at Jamaican news at the time. Yes. And I'm just going to say, I'm a father. And say, well, I'm Clive. But if I never, you have a son and I have two, I never say, Clive, I'm a man there, you know. Yeah, man. I mean, no man, when you put a security at the gate, door, and still in a passage, in the passage, I'm mean, say, yo, you're, you're a monkey, man. Come here, come here sir. And a man come and see me and say, hey, come out, fire him. So, yo, yo, no, no, no. And I'm mean, say, it's a clear, you're a madman. Or him came to have part to a good. And I'm mean, going <laughs> see him anywhere in the country, I'm mean, see him do all Farrell, I'm mean, see yeah. him do great right. things, and I'm going to do it. Yeah. You have worked with the who is who in the business, the greatest, yes, from Scatterlights to Popcorn. Is there a particular artist when you have sessions with them, you know, you get that energy, you look forward to that, you get that vibes, that artist, they're quick. Mm. Yeah, man, quite a few quite of them. Quite a few of them. Yeah, but in terms of quickness, I have no patience when to sit down with a singer for him sing all day. Mm. If it, I, if you sing, you should know the song to sing it pretty quick. I don't believe in taking two, three, four, five or to voice a singer. I'm not going to be there. <laughs> I leave. I'd hire somebody who, who I trust and who mm. knows is capable but you're not to supervise. Stay. No, no, no. You, you, you may make him. And, and you see, you, you make them when you go to the road and start jumping and down, you know. Yes. You know what I mean? I'm telling you, you know. I have worked with uh, Khaled. You talk about Khaled. Khaled, Khaled mm. is, a, is, a, is, a, is, is an uh, Arab. Shep Khaled is mm. his right name. And... Um, Arab French artist from Universal in France. I worked on an album and I did um, maybe six or seven songs. And in fact, six or seven songs were one time. One time. One time. And only one. I'm not singing one word in English. And only one song. When it was the last song, he did something. I said, hey! And he said, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And you, you, yeah, you, that, that, you, 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 you. Okay, come on, go from top of this again. See it right down. That's no, it. No, no, it's fixed, this, fixed, this, and it's. Man sing, but and the album sell millions. Millions. <laughs> <laughs> when them call me to celebrate, you know, to celebrate, and we go to France, when them have a stack of platinum, multi-platinum album for me to come to Jamaica and give to everybody who work on it. You see? They block off about ten blocks, you know, police, you know. And they must celebrate in a Paris, you know. Yeah. For for the, with this thing. And they have all roast fish and roast. Sweet potato thing, you know, say me come yes. and case of Heine, cases of Heineken. So, apart from them French and them Arab the big thing, they had stuff for me and just me alone, the only Jamaican there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Which song that you have worked on, whichever way, whether 
produce or mm -hmm. arrange or written or what has, has, has had the greatest impact from a financial perspective. You know, after how much money you make still, but make money. I am not good with 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 with, with, with figures. Keeping, yeah, but mm -hmm. um, oh, well, some songs I never stop earning from. Okay, like make money and so on. But I've never, <laughs> I never receive. Well, I can say the first check I get from Milk and Honey, one in publishing from BMI. First time I got a, a check from them from Milk and Honey was like ten thousand. No, actually, it wasn't. No, wrong. It was Dennis Brown fall play. Fall I, play, yeah, right? I okay. keep doing. I can, I, BMI first time I reached a big check like ten grand from BMI for fall play. Now it was the day before Christmas. I was living in Florida. My, my a good mom Christmas and gift. That, uh, I was selling my, my, my sofa. I'm a short side. I'm a short sofa and I'm a veranda. I'm a neighbor. Keep a American guy keep begging me to buy it. I'm saying, what you want that for? He wants it for him house. I said, bread, you, make, you want that to count me in your house? No, nah, man. I mean, me wouldn't even give it to him. And, and I want the Christmas Eve. Think <laughs> would that. I go over him and cut him down. I said, Steve, Steve. <laughs> I said, what's up, man? I said, I walk up to him and say, it's a sofa. I said, how much you give me free time? I said, something like $60. I said, I went him do that, the postman drive up. And I say, I give my lady a, a, a something, and she says, so say, she goes and say, Clive, Clive. And I say, mm -hmm. yeah, sister, all right, you got the money now? I can come for it. And she says, I'm going to come, Clive. And I say, why, why, why are you nice? And she, she just give me the BMI check. I mean, she get some BMI check, a few hundred dollars, yeah, a thousand dollars, maybe something. And I say, ten thousand dollars. <laughs> it was ten thousand dollars. I said, "Where did you take the sofa free?" <laughs> so, but anyway, I, I made. I can tell a French. I've done some French thing. Okay. I get blow up big. Yes. Me, 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 me take credit for doing most of that, if not all of it. Can I go to France and just tell, introduce myself as a reggae producer? And um, I, I, I got work. And there was a French artist. I can say uh, uh, at one point I earned more from him than any. His name is Pierre Paul Jack. Pierre Paul Jack. Yeah, you hear about him? Yes, man. I, when, I, when I was doing something else for the record company, yeah. them introduced me to him. They introduced me to him. Him, uh, him stuff. I'm mean, listening. I say, why am I wicked? And some say, oh, could I do even two of this on the other one? I say, oh, no, no, no. He wants to do it himself. So the studio, I love him. The record company was universal. So much to let Bill a student in, in his barn, in, way in the country, away from Paris. Mm. Bill a studio just for him to do his album. Then they pull up at the studio and they release everything. Yes. Yes. So when I, I was looking, I was anxiously waiting to get his album. So when the album come out and I asked for it, um, I'm like it. And so I tell him, say, next album, you know, I can't be saying, I want to work with a Yota. So the next album, you know, I, I did something and it become big. And so when I went, I went, you know, to, to, to deal with business about it. And then I said, what about people? And I said, ah, oh, no, no, no. So I said, I mean, no. They say, oh, no good. They said the album didn't do well. So I said, let me listen. I mean, listen. I mean, just tell the, tell the record company to give me a copy of three of the songs. And I come back to Tough Gang and just... Sort them out. And they send it back up and they just... I don't know what happened, but they put out the album, put my three thing on Think it. it. And then the press, the French press say, now the bridge has been crossed. Paris to Kingston. And it just go, bam, big. Nice. And I did it, an album with them after. And one of the songs... I'm building a studio and I make enough money to, 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 to and it's, if my <laughs> studio is Lindsay. remote, it's bush, bush, bush. Up in Alinsey there? Yeah, man, yeah. It's soon finished? I, I've been, it's, all right, let me tell you this. It would have been the first Pro Tools studio, because nobody even knew what to name Pro Tools when I, was, when I started building. Oh, so it's been a while then? Yes, it's, no, people have Pro Tools studio. Yeah, everybody have Pro Tools, man. In them kitchen, yeah. uh, under the bed. <laughs> so it was the first, you know, me tell, the musicians and the engineers said, maybe that's Pro Tools Studio. Even the, down at Tough Gang was working. I remember they called me from Tough Gang. I was working there every day, I tell them. And they said, Clyde, what's a Pro Tools Studio? And I tell them, they said, make me set up on here. I said, no, I wanted to have my own. And I, have me, I get gunshot too because I hit, because people come to me and pressure me about money and that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Um, but it's not finished. And then I decided to abandon it, it. And after nine years, I'm not even going there to where it is, you know. It's in bushes. My brother keep every every time me who walk behind me. So I said, "Where do you want to? Go to the studio." He said, "You take it, live there, you know." And mm. I start working on it. And me and him, I'm just go sleep and I wake up. My younger brother did it. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, 
making, I, I can't really tell you, but I, I have made money off music, but not from the music. How, how can I tell you that? You have made money off the music, but not from the music. Like, say, for example, putting a resistance, resistance. Yes. I was never paid. I was never paid one of the penny with them throw away. You don't like a brown penny there when them throw away. I still make them. Not at all. But it got so big until I tell you, Jimmy Cliff asked me to work with him. And then it, I, if I've done, to know what thing I did, three, three, maybe three and a half albums with Jimmy Cliff. Plus numerous other stuff, all the French stuff then. And then in France, I just threw that one song. And then there was a time, sometimes I just go flat, you know. I just go no flat. No work. Me don't want no work. Me just throw me. Take me a long way. I just live, no, me live with my family, my mother and my sisters and brothers. They give me food. I'm, you know, I do that. I can't afford to do it anymore I'm for my age and, mm. and certain things now. But um, um, I remember a few years ago, right? I can name it one song. I was, not now going on, a friend of mine came and showed me a, a farmer, and his farmer, and he had a big, big pen with thousands of pigs. And he said to me, Mr. Clive, I you can know, buy one of them gear. I said, for I must say, no, man, he's one him started, you know. I must say, yeah. And the man, you know the guy, the man say, yes, Clive, where, where, where? And, him, you know, them actually helped me pay, you know, and build a pen. I must say, I build a farm, because we have work of land down there, my family, my father, anyway. And me, the eldest son, and nobody in the business with that. Bush, they won't live in them nice houses. <laughs> I mean, so we just go there, and the man with the pen, and me have it there. And the hog there, and me have watch him, I water him. And I say, cool him, I say, I'm not for dinner. And the phone ring, and me take it up. And it was Jack Yore. Who call me and say, Father Clive, me, me I do a session at Tough Gang tonight now. Why well, I'm coming to do two two, two two for me now? So I say, What time? I say, I'm not ride, you know. And I say, No problem, man. I say, You have a song there, man. I say, I say, No, I'm not a song. I say, Ruba, I'm not make rhythm. I make music. I not make rhythm. And I say, Jan, you know, so you can't do it, man. And I say, rare, rare. So I say, OK, so why I do the thing? I have Homer vibes in my head, which is not the song, you know, but the vibes for the rhythm. Yeah. And then we went to the studio and record it while he was out there talking and doing him thing. And it, it is, it, but when, when, then the other guy came, a writer, came and he the track and started writing. And the guy called me from the big yard studio to listen. The chorus, you know, and say, I like it. And he said, yes, good. And the song finished. And um, after some rigmarole wrestling with the artists and so, you know, between three of us to get the oof, oof get what, what, all right. I didn't get the money then neither for it. All right? I, didn't, I didn't think I get fear. Uh, I think the engineer lives from Close my, by. Yeah. Say it. Uh, he's not somebody who I introduced to the business. So he was a chief man now a tough guy. <laughs> so anyway, when when I went when we, when we decided the song came out and it became a big hit. I did talk about when I found that girl, Jack Yes, man. So that song you know make me has made me keep from that song came out, everything has been up up. So my phone has stopped ring. Since that till now, till now. So, if we for calculate say what money we make after, I don't. I make it because of. I understand not, exactly what you say, man. I understand yeah. exactly what you say. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Serious. And I encourage people. This is something I want it to be known. I, I encourage musicians, whether they are active, especially if they are golden, whether people care for when people care for work or work, whether they have money or not. I do that. That's how I do it. And I tell people to do it. Because if you have a good song or you have the potential to make a good song, you call me, I go come. If I, don't, if I can't afford gas or lunch or a drink, I say you have to have lunch. You know what I mean? Uh, even though when I can't see, I tell you, you have to have lunch with me. I'm a driver, gas and toll, and Heineken and water, <laughs> money. I do that. I tell you, yes. I do it up to today, you know. Today here, January 31st, 2022, I did that. You know what I'm saying? I still do it because that's how I've benefited from the beginning until now. now. And stay in it. Once you do good work, you just walk away. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come back to you. Yeah, yeah. Definitely will. How many children? Oh, lad, 23. <laughs> <laughs> Might get silent. <laughs> yeah. 23? Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you go out with the road, man. Hey, in, you know, music, my, 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 my story, my story is really like, Oh, it shouldn't have gone, but it is like... <laughs> oh, it shouldn't have gone. It's like, really, me get gunshots so, and the military says so guns, drugs, wine, women, rhythm, and songs. 
Oh, that sound. So, so musical. It's, it's, it's a music show. It's a musical. <laughs> it's a wild music life. It's a wild music life. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you like what I said? Yeah, what? Gun, song? drugs, wine, women, rhythm, and songs. And songs. Yeah. Very, yeah. very musical. <laughs> but in, in the in two, three, four hundred years ago, it was wine, women, and song. Yes. You know, Beethoven, Bach, and all them Mozart. Yes. That's how they lived. Why they live on that wear the best clothes and they died poor. And they live the best life <laughs> and they sleep with princes, princesses, princesses. and mm. you know what I mean, queens on the side and ma chamber maids and but they, they end up in some grave where nobody can't fight. He, he, I think uh, Around this yeah. song, don't have a, around one place. So me just end up with, and, and by default, you know, that way. <laughs> <laughs> but me so, still alive, you know, yes. and doing well and yes. trust me. May have things lined up. If I live six more months, they'll never forget me. And you will, right? They'll never forget. No, then six Bob more Mar months. Yeah, Bob Marley. Bob Marley said that. They're not tired of seeing my face. With me, they're more tired of hearing my name. Tired of hearing me. Know that. Me sure that. For the people out there who if want, me live, sorry. if me live, sorry, if you are to for the people out there who want to get in touch for for do some work, I have um, Sir Clive do some work with them. I do some work with Sir Clive. How they go about getting in touch with you? Well, and people find me, you know, so, so you know, uh, because <laughs> Facebook, you know, Facebook have some stuff there. I yeah. can't see to go on it, but oh, okay. when you got Messenger, I can luckily because um, Chris put my phone on, yeah, man. on the black screen, right. so I can read WhatsApp okay. and, and, and Messenger. So when somebody contact me on Messenger, when I finally can go to it and I say, you know, and I say, I just send my WhatsApp number, my number, and I say, you can WhatsApp me. Mm -hmm. But I still get, you know, it's, I, I am on Instagram. And, What's um, the name on Instagram? Clive Hunt. Clive Hunt. Production. Production. It's P R O D. Yes. Oh, yeah. I guess Chris' number would be good for, to share with them, though. Yeah, man. And my number, if you want yeah, it. Yeah, go ahead, man. Yeah, man. It's 876-573-4583. Go again. And my email address is... Da Hunt, D A H U N T. Okay. Official at gmail.com. Yes. Run your number again, please. 876 573 4583. Yeah. Father Hunt, we know we can't sit down and do this a day and a half or more. At first, we have so much. First, we have so much. I, 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 make, uh, to make them, yeah, I can't tell you something. There's yeah. a whole lot I haven't said. Yes, I, I, I do. You know what I mean? Yes. And if I said everything, I, I can't leave anymore now. So I feel like, <laughs> yeah, we're going to run here. I'm going to AWOL again. We have four African children, you know. So remember, I say no, say I am. And, and there for more than two different countries. Oh, okay. So I have my homes there. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to let everybody come back. Don't move it. Before we leave, yeah. Sir Hunt, yeah. I appreciate the contribution to the music, sir. You understand? And mm. I know. You know, because as I go along, I learn more and more and more. I understand the impact that the man has had on the music and continue to have on the music. And great works. Genius at work. I don't know. We tell her, we um. must always start, you know, so we have to decide. <laughs> Genius at work, sir. I have decided that. Oh, Lord. So keep doing it. Yeah, and man. It, 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 way more yeah. than six months, man. So we'll yeah. never forget you. Trust me, trust me. <laughs> I appreciate it. Buddy. Yeah, but it's a joy. It's a yeah, joy. Man. It's really a joy. Thank you for Yeah, man. Me. Big up yourself and yeah. go and fight the fight. Uh, yeah, sir? Respect, yeah, man. Blessings, yeah? blessings, man, blessings, man, blessings. Teach them. Hey, yo, hello. Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Like the video before you go. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. And remember to share the video with your friends and family. And browse the channel for more quality content. Until next time, walk good, my friends. Teach them.